Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a brief introduction to KeePass XC. So having a brief look over their website, KeePass XC is a fork of KeePass X because they noted that uh, some people noted that KeePass X had not really seen any real development. There were a lot of changes and edits pulled and nothing was ever really integrated in. And so some people said eh, it might be a little bit dead or just not really uh, not really being being used much. And so they forked it, produced KeePass XC, which is a cross-platform community edition local password manager. And that's important because things like uh, LastPass, online password manager, never, ever, ever use an online password manager. Some people are talking about Bitwarden. Uh, Bitwarden has a local option and an online option, I believe. And I am absolutely not a fan of using a password manager online outside of very rare situations. And those would be very specific things you want to use in it. So you want to use something that is local and KeePass XC being as it's cross platform is going to be a good option. Now, if you're running a something like Arch uh, Manjaro, things like that. You're going to find KeePass XC. You might still find KeePass X in your distro, depending on what you are. Um, I don't think I have KeePass on this particular computer here, so uh, I can't tell you exactly what's in my repo for Linux Mint 18.3. Probably just KeePass X. But you can uh, go ahead and uh, download it on a variety of different builds. This is encrypted with uh, 256 encryption. They, the default is 256 AES. There's other encryption methods if you do the advanced options, which we will look for. Of course, it is cross-platform and open source. So this one is the most up to, the, up to date. There are also browser extensions that you can use for your different web browsers. I personally am not completely sure if I would do that. I want to know a little bit more about how that works behind the hood, uh, under the hood there. So it kind of depends. Uh, it might be something I wouldn't use. I'd want to learn a little bit more about it before I'd recommend that. But as far as keeping an offline password manager, that is something that is important to do. And so with that, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to boot up a virtual machine where I have this installed and then we are going to go ahead and have a look at uh, KeePass XC. All right, so here we are on a Manjaro budgie desktop. Uh, this is a uh, an Arch-based system that I had in my virtual machines already, so that's why we're going to go ahead and use this one. So I've went ahead and installed KeePass X. If you do not already have it on your system and you're running anything Arch, like Manjaro, Arch, whatever else, you just want to go ahead and search for KeePass. Notice it's K-E-E. -E. So here's our KeePass. And we have, uh, I believe, KeePass Pass Safe. I think this is probably the older one. We're looking at KeePass XC, which is the new fork that is maintaining a lot of the newer development, has browser extensions and things like that. So just make sure that that is installed and then we're going to go ahead and boot this guy up. All right, so let me go ahead and approximately center that. So here is our basic startup screen when we boot this up. So you can see here that we have options from uh, to create a new database. We can open an existing database or we can import from KeePass 1 or import from a CSV. So like if you're on LastPass and you want to get off of those cloud cat password managers, which I would highly recommend because LastPass is a giant hacker target. You get into that one time, you can get into everybody's everything. Yay! And so get off of those cloud-based systems. Use something local and uh, just make sure that you have your database backed up into your regular backups. So you can import in a CSV. Now, whatever the last database that you've used, it will automatically try to load that up when you uh, start up KeePass XC, so you don't have to worry about constantly going and trying to open the database. But since we have not created a database, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So you can see here, we have new database, open it. There's recent databases, which is empty, merging, there's importing from different options, and then everything else is, we have a password generator, we have our settings, so here, start only a single instance of KeePass XC. So this is going to prevent me from having multiple things open. We can minimize the window at startup 
uh, you know, just other basic options as far as this. So you'll see here that this will clear the keyboard after a certain amount of time, or clear the clipboard after a certain amount of time. This is important because one of the downsides of some password managers that were problematic in the past is the last password you had saved on the clipboard until something else used it. So this is going to allow you to clear the, the clipboard. So you can choose how long it takes to clear it. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, choose whatever that happens to be. 10 seconds I think is just fine. You can lock the database after a certain amount of activity. So if you're just opening it up, that is of course disabled because some people might keep this open for the duration that they're using the computer. You can lock databases when the computer is locked or lid is closed, that is the default. And then you can also lock it after minimizing windows. Other things that are, there's some applications that some people may wanna use for it, but they might be really annoying. So I really do like the defaults that they've given to us. Browser integration, you can enable or disable the browser integration. So you will need to get the, um, the individual um, extensions for it. So one for Firefox and then Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, Brave will all use one. And then you can choose specifically which browsers you are going to be able to integrate with. All right, we have an SSH agent and key share. So for sharing keys. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll close out our settings and we will go ahead and create a new database. So database name, um, you can do something like passwords or I mean, if you're gonna use a name like passwords, why don't we just use um, obvious file to hack? I mean, makes about as much sense. Uh, in other words, I'm tongue in cheeking way of saying, maybe put this as something that's not quite as obvious password or, you know, something that looks like, you know, certainly you also don't want to use uh, financial data, you know, <laughs> use something that, that you know what it is. Um, you know, I'm going to call mine stuff. All right, we're not gonna go ahead and give it a description right now. So now we wanna decide where to save it. Um, actually, that's kind of the last. So decryption time, this is how long it's going to take to decrypt your system. So you can say up to five seconds, you click to decrypt the system, it's gonna take five seconds. What this is doing is it's going to make the thing a little bit more secure. So let's go ahead and pick two seconds and then database format, um, I'm not sure what the two differences of these are. Just use the 4.0 uh, unless you have a reason to use something else. So here's our more advanced settings again. We have a few different options for encryption algorithms, a few different uh, key durations, all these different things as well. So with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue. And now we want to enter our password. So we're going to enter a super secret password that is definitely not master pass. Make sure that yours is definitely better. So the idea is you remember one password instead of, of other options. You can add additional types of protection here. So you can do a key file for extra security. And if you have a UB key, you can use a UB key for this as well. So we're not gonna add any of those, but just showing you that those options are available. Go ahead and hit done and then it's going to have us save the file somewhere. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save it and I'm actually going to save it in a hidden folder uh, just so that if somebody casually has access to it, they're not gonna find this file here. So let's go ahead and, why did it not change my file name? We're gonna go ahead and call this stuff. All right, so we're gonna save that. All right, so now we have saved this. Now the reason I did the hidden folder is because if you happen to just have your basic home directory here, somebody gets in here and accesses this, they might be looking for this file, they can't get to it. Now of course a, a sophisticated person will come over here and they'll actually see that, oh, there's a hidden thing with a hidden .kdbx. That becomes the obvious target, but it provides just a little bit of extra obscurity from the people who may not be the experts to keep your system safe. All right, so now we have our new instance here and we are empty. So with this, you might want to organize things. Maybe you have emails, maybe you have websites, you have banks, you have oh, whatever the variety of things happens to be, you can actually create new folders. So you can see under groups, we can edit groups or we can have new groups. So our first group is called root. 
So if we don't want to have one called root, you can do, you know, whatever you want to do. Let's just call this master. So we have our master list. We have an icon list, so we can choose from our various icons. Let's go ahead and pick the penguin because this is Linux. All right. Um, so let's see other options we have. Created all these different options there as well. Let's go ahead and apply this. Click OK. So now we have a penguin called master. Come down and add a new group. So maybe we'll call this one emails for let's call this email addresses and let's find a address here something that would be good for emails that one looks beautiful we can create another group so let's do websites uh, website addresses uh, let's do website accounts and let's see this looks yeah let's do the world for that all right, um, we can drag that around. I do not want that under emails. Um, make sure it's on the top listing wherever you want. This will kind of nest down as many nests as you really want. And we'll do one more. Let's just call that banks um, uh, moolah. I probably spelled that wrong, but I'm a you know, very bad speller, so why not, right? All right, so now we have a major master system and we have three different categories. So one for email addresses, one for websites, one for banks. You can go ahead and create whatever you want to use. So now to create a new one, we can just go ahead and hit a new entry over here. Uh, of course, you do have uh, the open options. We have the save options. Let's go ahead and just create a new entry, which you can do here or a new entry right here in the menu. So we'll call this um, my uh, non Gmail. There you go. It's my non Gmail because Gmail is not recommended around here. All right. So, um, let's just give it our username. So we'll call it my email at non gmail.com and then give it a password. So we have the option here to generate a password. I got to remember exactly where it is. It's under tools. Uh, password generator. So if you're creating an account right now, you can go ahead and choose how long you want it. You can choose the types of characters to use, things like that. And then it's just going to go ahead and give you whatever it happens to be. So let's say, all right, we'll copy that one and use that password and then go ahead and use it again. So you can use this I button here to see what that password actually is. You can go ahead and keep it there and let's just call our website at non-gmail.com. You can set an expiration to the password. So if you are using this at some account that requires you to change your password every few months, you can go ahead and choose that. And then any notes, uh, my basic email account. All right, so click your OK button. And now when we navigate to our emails, we'll see here, that I have my username, we have my password, which I can click this button to view it. I have the URL and the expiration. Here's the notes. And then if I want to actually grab this password, I can come up here, copy the username to the clipboard, copy the password to the clipboard. I can copy the URL to the clipboard. And um, let's see, there's the password generator. There's the locking the database. So let's go ahead here and uh, copy the username to the clipboard. Let's just go ahead and show you what this is going to do. So now we'll go ahead and paste it and it just goes ahead and pastes our system there. So we can do the same to say, all right, we got our username in there. Let's grab our password. Now, since we have this set for 10 seconds before it clears the password, let's go ahead and give it its 10 seconds time. Has this been about 10 seconds? I don't know. Let me take a little bit of sip of tea and then um, we'll try that again. Okay, so now I'm trying to paste it and it will not paste because it has cleared itself from the clipboard. So it has cleared itself. Now I'm not sure what this is going to do. Uh, there's tools on like KDE, for example, that keep a record of the past clipboard. I'm not sure if this is going to keep a record of those on the past clipboard. That might be something to test out. I have not uh, looked at that option. Uh, before, but it's definitely something you can do. Of course, you can just double click on things and make any adjustments and edits to it that you would like. Uh, you can 
change the major icons to each individual account if you want to do that. Um, but with all that um, background color, so it's all the different settings that you have. So there's how we can uh, create a database. We can add a new item. We can arrange things by groups. You can change your icons around. Overall, a tool like this is very simple to use, and I would highly, highly recommend using a on-site, a local site. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this thing is in your backup. So in other words, when you're going to make your backups, you just wanna make sure you come over here and just grab your database file. So if I were to lose my database, my hard drive crashes, whatever else, I can come over here and say, all right, well, I got my old thing here. Let's just go ahead and keep this guy back here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's, uh, we can save database, save database as. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and close it. And now we're gonna say, oh, our, our, our file was corrupted. All right, so our file was corrupted. When we go back on to reinstall, uh, reload key pass. It's going to give us an error that we cannot access this. So we can just go ahead now and open a new database. And now we can find where our database was. I put it in my documents. Uh, now, now it wants a password. So let's just call our password up. Hit enter. And now we have our password manager. So all you need to do is keep that one encrypted file safe in your backup archives. And then you can pull that file back in. You can drop it right back wherever it needs to be in your system. So I drop that into documents. Let's go ahead and uh, cut it out of documents and drop it back into dot stuff. And now it's like, oh, it cannot access the database anymore. Uh, that's okay. We'll just go ahead and close it reopen that back up. We could have just selected the open database as well. Um, so let's go ahead, open the database. I thought I cut that out of there, but maybe I didn't. So now we're back to our stop. That one's locked. This one's the one we're looking at now. So we've not lost anything. So just make sure that you have that local database file in your regular backups and you will be safe from losing your databases. So there is a quick introduction to KeePass. Uh, of course, we did not look at the browser integration as a functionality at this point in time. If we really wanna see that, maybe I'll consider doing a video on that in the future. But with that, uh, let me know your thoughts on KeePass XC. Have you used these? What password managers are you using? And give me your master password in the comments down below. That's right. Thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.